Tim's News Explosion. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Tim's News Explosion on this Monday, the 19th of September, 2022. We are live on the Wilmsfront YouTube, DLive and Odyssey channels, as well as on the interactive entropy software, which I've put the link into the live chat where you can ask myself a direct question or send through a super chat. Uh, Hello to all the regulars. Uh, Peak Aussie Man and uh, Kesho, uh, good to see you all. It is 8.30 p.m. here in Melbourne, Victoria, which means it is 11.30 a.m. in London, where Queen Elizabeth II's funeral proceedings are well underway at West- Westminster Abbey. Uh, every major network in the, the world is, is, is covering it, so... For me, uh, the news explosion uh, goes on. I've got it on in the the, the background. Uh, Before I started, they'd been singing some uh, hymns uh, there. Uh, So uh, at the end of today, uh, Queen Elizabeth, she will finally uh, be laid to rest next to her uh, late husband, Prince Philip, at uh, Windsor Castle. As I've said before, uh, the death of the Queen and the proclamation of King Charles III uh, has displayed the amount of tradition that still exists in the United Kingdom and other Commonwealth realms. Uh, The British monarchy clearly still has strong support as demonstrated by the the wait time of the the queue uh, to view the, the Queen's coffin, uh, which is called the the lying in state. It was uh, stretched out to almost uh, 24 hours. And as you can see, uh, just on this this map here, uh, it uh, was it's huge along the, the, the Thames River, uh, but it was probably the, the most uh, civilised, on the whole, civilised and friendly and most patient uh, queue. Uh, A lot of uh, people in the queue uh, made uh, lifelong uh, friends. A lot of uh, British uh, parents took their young children along uh, because they wanted their children to have memories of this uh, moment uh, in time. Uh, Former uh, footballer David Beckham, he uh, waited uh, his uh, turn uh, to view the uh, uh, the Queen's coffin, uh, didn't skip the queue. Uh, same can be not said uh, for Philip and Holly, the hosts of this morning. Remember them? They're the ones that on their spin the wheel segment had will pay your energy bills. They skipped the, the queue. Uh, so this morning put out a statement. Hello, everyone. We would like to clarify something. We asked Philip and Holly to be part of a film for this Tuesday's program. They did not jump the queue have VIP access or file past the Queen lying in state, but instead we're there in a professional capacity as part of the world's media uh, to report on the event. Well, if you can call this morning a media program, and it's more uh, a glorified entertainment uh, program, while the traditions of the, the UK have uh, been on display, uh, so has uh, the modern diversity uh, of the, the UK. There was, uh, I said that uh, the, the queue to, to view the Queen's coffin was mostly uh, civil because there was this uh, disgusting incident. So uh, two women were sexually assaulted in the queue to, s- to see the Queen's lying in state, a court has heard. Uh, Ido Ashine. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Uh, 19, allegedly exposed himself and pushed into mourners from behind as they waited in line at Victoria Tower Gardens in Westminster, central London, on Tuesday evening. It is said he is said to have gone into the River Thames in an attempt to evade police officers before coming out and being arrested. 
Adeshine was remanded in custody on Friday after appearing at Westminster Magistrates Court charged with two counts of sexual assault and two counts of breaching a sexual harm prevention order, which uh, implies that he was already on some sort of uh, uh, police order. The court heard the first complainant allegedly noticed Adeshine because she had not previously seen him despite having waited in the queue with the same people for hours. She is said to have noticed him getting closer to her before feeling something touching her back, then turned to see he had exposed himself. Gross. The woman later allegedly saw an uh, Adeshine acting in a similar way towards uh, another woman before security were alerted and police were called. Said to have thrown his phone into the Thames before entering the water himself, but it was arrested shortly after coming out of the river. Outlining the allegations, prosecutor Alex Adewale said the defendant was part of the queue to see the rest of the state uh, uh, resting in state of Queen Elizabeth II. His alleged victims are said to be among the thousands of people who have been lining the banks of the, th the Thames to view the Queen's coffin. Now, uh, as we speak, uh, probably uh, the UK's most uh, un unprecedented uh, police security operation is uh, in force, uh, but uh, that means that, uh, well, uh, resources are, are stretched uh, thin, and in the, uh, the multicultural melting pot of Leicester, uh, there's been multiple nights of uh, sectarian violence, not the traditional sort of uh, British uh, sectarian violence between Protestants and, and Catholics at the, uh, the, the Scottish football on the weekend, uh, uh, Celtic uh, fans, uh, they're the uh, Catholic uh, uh, Catholic nationalists, they uh, chanted, uh, if you hate the monarchy, clap your hands. So that That's the traditional sectarianism in the UK. But in Leicester, uh, the new modern uh, sectarianism uh, was uh, writing between uh, Hindus and Muslims. <laughs> And now this is how the, the Daily Mail uh, reported it. So police flood Leicester and activate dispersal powers as they urge calm after disorder. It's disorder. It's not a riot, uh, according to the Daily Mail. Continues on the streets after protests. So the unrest in East Leicester area was reported to police by numerous members of the public. Videos have emerged online which appear to show groups attempting to attack each other and throwing bottles. Speaking of the BBC, one woman said that huge amounts of people involved in the unrest wore balaclavas or masks on their fa faces. Uh, I assume uh, that uh, the COVID safe uh, people uh, will be glad that they're, they're, they're writing in, in the proper uh, P PPE. And so in a video update posted to Leicestershire Police website at 9 p.m. last night. Officers confirm they deployed people to take control of the situation. Police added that their additional officers were en route and community leaders on the ground urged people not to get involved and avoid the area calling for calm. As you can see yet, yeah, there's still no mention of, you know, who's fighting who. And so it mentions the dispersal uh, powers and stop and search uh, pa uh, powers. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this order, it authorizes officers to return those under 16s to their homes. 
So uh, rumors that a mosque in the city was attacked earlier were quashed by police. They said, we've seen reports on social media that a mosque is being attacked. Officers of the ground have confirmed this is not true. Only share information on social media that uh, you know to be true. People were urged to go home by Leicester East MP Claudia Webb, who said it was time for cool heads. She added that dialogue can be strengthened to repair relations between communities. Uh, the current unrest has occurred after earlier disorder in the city in, in late August. So this is not the, the first time a fight had broken out in the Belgrave area of Leicester following the Asia Cup cricket match between India and Pakistan, which led to eight arrests. More unrest broke out in the days afterwards between members of the Hindu and Islamic communities. There we go. We finally get it to a, like, nearly like three quarters of the way through. Uh, the police then launched an operation made of further 19 uh, arrests. Uh, so uh, the rest just goes on to a statement from the temporary chief constable, uh, Rob Nixon, uh, calling calling for, for calm. The incidents we have seen could have had a far more serious consequence. We need to continue working together to ensure we bring this to an end. This includes not circulating speculation on social media, but instead working with us to ensure incidents are reported and proper checks are carried out. Thank you for your continued support as we move forward. We've had some really positive meetings with members of the community who have reached out to us and I look forward to more of these in the future. As I've said previously, working together, we have have made a difference and I know that, that together we can ensure uh, this continues. So uh, diversity uh, is still going to be a strength. Uh, it seems to be the so it seems it seems to be the the, the message uh, coming through uh, from that chief, chief constable. Uh, so yeah, Leicester seems to be what you would call little uh, British India at the moment. Maybe they'll have to uh, partition uh, the city like uh, uh, the Brits did when they they left uh, British India to, to India and and Pakistan there. Now, a commentator who I would really like to, to know his uh, opinion on the Leicester riots. Uh, he uh, reigns from uh, the city of Nottingham, uh, not too far away from Leicester. Uh, Alex Belfield, the, the voice of reason. I've been wanting to uh, have him on the show for uh, a number of years. He's uh, his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the, the voice of reason is uh, probably my favorite uh, for uh, unfiltered uh, British uh, free speech commentary, but uh, I won't be able to have the chance to interview him for about another five and a half years uh, because he has uh, been jailed uh, because for uh, stalking uh, former uh, BBC presenters because uh, he started off as a, as a BBC uh, radio uh, DJ and decided to start his own uh, YouTube channel and became a, a BBC whistleblower exposing I uh, the uh, the the amount of of waste and uh, uh, of course the 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 BBC their discriminatory hiring practices hiring uh, discriminating against whites and also uh, their far left uh, bias uh, so he was subjected to a a trial uh, accused of stalking eight uh, 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 current or former BBC pers personalities. He was uh, found uh, guilty by a jury on four uh, of those, uh, but they there was the... He were, it was found guilty in uh, two of them just by majority uh, verdict. I, the the other two were unanimous uh, verdicts. So he's found not guilty on four, on the other four. So Jeremy Vine, he's the most high profile who uh, complained uh, to uh, the, the police that, uh, uh, so uh, Belfield was found uh, guilty when it came to Vine and Philip uh, uh, Dennehy of simple stalking but was found guilty when it came to bernard spedding and uh, ben hewis 
uh, for the uh, charge of uh, charge of it goes 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 further up here. It's quite uh, this is done by the uh, the BBC itself. So the he was found guilty there of pursuing a course of conduct that amounted to harassment, which amounted to stalking and caused them serious alarm or distress. So it goes here. He was a he was a, a sentenced to. Uh, two years in prison for each of the uh, of the more uh, what is termed uh, serious uh, off offences, and uh, so they each carry. He was sentenced to two years, but he has to serve them uh, cons consecutively. Like norm, like a lot of the time, uh, if you're found guilty of, of multiple offences, you can serve it uh, concurrently, and uh, the extra half a year. Uh, was uh, for the uh, was for the simple stalking offences, thirteen weeks, also to run uh, consecutively. So, like it's been well reported, uh, the uh, uh, the the heinous crimes, the the grooming games they've committed, the the cover ups by the the media and the the local uh, uh, police. Uh, the apparently the the UK uh, police they haven't got time for serious uh, offences, but they can uh, imprison a YouTube personality uh, for a uh, for a well for running a YouTube channel criticising a BBC uh, personalities. So. Uh, the the judge said that Belfield bombarded Mr. Spedding, who had previously been friends with uh, with Belfield, with Facebook messages, emails, and made highly abusive YouTube videos containing false allegations. He had no escape from you. The judge said it was an aggravating factor that Belfield's harassment was public, as this caused his social media followers to also abuse Mr. Spedding over a lengthy period. In some cases, it ex extended to death threats and so it, uh, it <coughs> belfield uh, uh belfield he acted at his at his own uh as, as his own lawyer so basically as i said like because uh these bbc personalities uh they are uh, convinced a, a jury and a judge that uh, he, uh, Belfield's, like, he didn't even approach them in real life or none of his followers even went to, uh, went to, uh, went to these people's houses. There was nothing physical in this, which is what traditional stalking is. It was just that, well, basically they managed to uh, uh, Claim, well, they convinced the the judge and jury that he drove them to the the brink of of suicide, and that was enough that Alex Belfield is uh, in prison for five and a half years. So, what is it? The judge says you are not a whistleblower in any sense, but developed a fixation with pursuing Mister Vine with a campaign of abuse, although. You at no stage committed to any physical acts. Mr. Vine considered himself and his family to be at risk of, and he was followers. He had to ask his family to watch out for you and to take care in and around their home address. So, again, this is just what you know. Vine felt uh, that, and why does Belfield? Why is he responsible for what others do? uh online like this is a whole thing they the the it seems to be implied that uh, alex belfield uh incited uh incited them now i think that uh, the reason why these uh, this uh, these eight people managed to get a police prosecution uh trial uh, going is because alex belfield as an ex bbc personality uh running his own youtube channel uh he became really popular so popular uh that obviously he was having an effect i mean his youtube channel it had three hundred fifty eight thousand subs and uh his uh popularity uh, spilled into real life because he uh, had live shows uh, across Britain in various cities, and he did several uh, collaborative uh, shows with with Katie.
Hopkins, it was called, to Gobshites Live. And uh, Katie Hopkins on her YouTube channel uh, did a, a video on Alex's uh, imprisonment. And she basically said the law is not really the law. Uh, the uh, uh, the law uh, judgments is one opinions of the law, and she says that she's going to to visit uh, Alex while he's in in prison, try to keep his spirits up like she did uh, when Tommy Robinson was uh, imprisoned also for the crime of journalism and uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to get the the powerful into account. And Alex had been harassed by the local Nottingshire police uh, for years. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is, I guess, uh, well, the, the UK, uh, it's like free speech is pretty much dead there. I mean, the, the police have imprisoned people, raided people for mean words on the internet, insensitive words on the, on the internet. Uh, uh, Alex Belfield's YouTube channel uh, has been uh, shadow banned, but it's still up. And he, he started off his, his own uh, secret uh, Voice of Reason Club on his his website and uh, his 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 vlogs. Uh, he did daily vlogs. They were just uh, like so quick, 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 quick paced. And he had really good catchphrases such as "Why, why, why?" And like when it came to the COVID people, he'd be like, "You can fuck right off. We've lost our fucking minds." And uh, also, was that uh, he came up with the best uh, nicknames, such as uh, for Megan Markle called her Megan Malarkey. Uh, he called uh, Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister of Scotland, Jeanette McCranky, uh, the First Minister of Wales, Mark Drayford. He referred to him as Mr. Dickford and Mr. Prickford. And uh, also, he uh, had his videos started uh, and ended with his own uh, choir, uh, which I'm going to uh, play for you now. Oh, shushy, shushy, please be quiet. This tippy-tappy cup shittery ain't for you. Alex Belfield's voice of reason. Suspended by YouTube, strip search for being a bomber to A witch hunt by the beep and cancelled by Ben O'Leary At the dopey times, we don't get too tiny shies Let's go rogue and ad free at alexbelfield.com The secret VOR club, sign up now and get shushy shush shush Don't tell the lefties or the woke tart shushy I certainly hope uh, that he doesn't waste away in the the next uh, five years, uh, Alex Belfield. I will certainly miss uh, miss him. I missed him when he he disappeared off off YouTube because uh, uh, YouTube kept uh, sanctioning him for for so called uh, harassment and and bullying. Now let's go over to the United States uh, where. Ron DeSantis, uh, the governor of Florida, up for re-election uh, this November for a, a second term, has perfectly exposed uh, the progressive left's uh, double standards and uh, also the, 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 the fact that uh, they do not um, want to uh, do the uh, do the actual practicing of what they preach uh, he uh, flew over to Martha's uh, vineyard uh, which is an island off the, the Massachusetts coast uh, south of Cape uh, Cod and it's a, it's an exclusive island uh, these are the uh, types of pe uh, types of residents that are in Martha's vineyard now but the Santas has sent migrants on a plane to Martha's Vineyard. Now, this is where the Obamas have a home, Oprah, Beyonce, even James Taylor, who's going to be seeing fire, rain, and migrants. Uh, not to mention Rosie O'Donnell. I mean, everybody, basically, that you know on the left has a home there. Do you think they're going to be embracing their new neighbors? <laughs> you know, these are all sanctuary cities until they're in their sanctuary. Right. I, I doubt they'll embrace them don't know that I've ever been to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I've been to places where we've seen these migrants come across. This is not good for America. 
Uh, every town's a border town, and we need to make sure we get our southern border secured exactly like we did for four years, Jesse. All right, Mike Pompeo. And Martha's Vineyard is also uh, famous for when in 1969, uh, former Democrat Senator uh, Ted Kennedy uh, drove a woman off a, a bridge uh, to her, her death at uh, Chappaquiddick. Uh, this is uh, a news report from the time. At midnight last Friday, Senator Edward M. Kennedy drove a car off a narrow bridge and into a pond on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. A young woman in the car with him was drowned. Kennedy survived but failed to report the accident until 10 hours later. Today, police moved to prosecute the senator on a charge of leaving the scene of an accident after causing bodily harm. And uh, Ted Kennedy, uh, he managed to escape any uh, custodial sentence and continued to serve in the U.S. Senate until his uh, death in 2009. Uh, Naughty to des Design says Boomer Tech. No, that's just a raw news report from 1969 when, yeah, obviously technology wasn't that good. I mean, it wasn't even in colour there. Now, Obviously, the, the slogan of the progressive left, uh, the, the Democrats, is uh, no human is uh, illegal. Uh, and, uh, of course, all the, the blue state uh, city mayors uh, have declared their cities sanctuary cities. Uh, but when uh, they're actually uh, delivered to the sanctuary, uh, how do... How do a progressive uh, Democrat leftist elites uh, react. So, what are the most difficult challenges right now? The difficult challenges are uh, we have at some point in time they have to move to somewhere else, right? We we cannot we don't have the services to take care of 50 immigrants, um, and we we certainly don't have housing. We're in a housing crisis as we are on this island, and so the. We don't, we can't house everyone here that lives here and works here. We don't have housing for 50 more people. Well, there's lots of large houses on, on Martha's Vineyard uh, with lots of rooms uh, in them. So you can certainly subdivide uh, the, <laughs> uh, the mansions on Martha's Vineyard. Oh yes, those those poor poor people on on Martha's Vineyard. They 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 they're doing it tough. I mean, they have to deal with uh, inflation as well. And of course, uh, Ron DeSantis, who he only sent them like fifty a smidgen of the illegal aliens who flood across the border uh, every day. Beating their chests when Trump was president, saying they were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk. And they're so upset that this is happening. And it just shows you, you know, their virtue signaling is a fraud, okay? They, they are supporting policies that are just frankly indefensible. It is not defensible for a superpower to not have any control over the territory of its country, over the borders of its country. And he inherited a situation where you didn't have this happening. And yes, we needed to build the wall. There was more that we needed to do. He reversed the Trump policies, knowing what would end up happening. And you know, one of the reasons why we want to transport because we obviously it's expensive if people are coming here. You gotta, it taxes social services and all these other things. Uh, Peak Aussie Man says DeSantis would be better than than Trump. I certainly uh, would favour uh, DeSantis uh, running for president over Trump in in 2024. Uh, Naughty Design says small fraction more like zero 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 point one. Well, according to this Breitbart article, there have been five million illegal border crossings since uh, Joe Biden. Uh, took office, and yes, it was uh, it was declared a humanitarian uh, crisis. Uh, just these fifty uh, illegals on Martha's Vineyard, and they were quickly uh, shipped, uh, bust, uh, bust off by Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker uh, to Joint Base uh, Cape Cod amid 
pressure from local officials. So uh, are they going to be put back in the Obama cages, uh, these uh, illegals? That's, that's what it sounds like there. Yes, uh, 5 million. Um, and we don't know the, the vaccination uh, status of uh, these uh, illegals uh, coming coming south of the, the border. If you come uh, come through the southern border uh, illegally, then uh, of course it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, Texas Governor uh, Greg Abbott, uh, he's been uh, sending them uh, to uh, Kamala Harris's house in, in Washington, uh, D.C., I, uh, Abbott's uh, been doing this uh, for for months, sending them to Chicago and, and New York, and uh, they've all been incredibly uh, hysterical. Uh, the the mayors, Laurie Lightfoot and Eric Adams, saying, "Oh, we need more support from the federal government. We can't uh, do this." And the irony of uh, some uh, progressive leftists saying that DeSantis and Abbott are engaging in human trafficking because they're moving people across state lines. I thought that uh, internal borders uh, and external borders didn't exist. And last time I checked, Florida wasn't a border state. So how did those 50 illegals manage to get their way into Florida, let alone in the, the United States? They're obviously trafficked there by someone. Did they really all come from Venezuela and Colombia by foot and weren't trafficked by anyone? But of course, it's okay if they're trafficked uh, on the way to the United States, but if they're, they're moved internally in the United States, oh, it's a, it's a crime against humanity. I'm a stupid moron, says, uh, come on, Tim. Uh, Haiti and Venezuelans have excellent track record on there, the COVID vaccines. I'd probably have to uh, look that up. Uh, now, uh, Merrick Garland's uh, FBI has uh, been at it uh, again, uh, going after uh, Donald Trump's uh, high, fi high profile uh, supporters. Uh, the latest uh, was the the My Pillow guy, uh, Mike Lindell. So they they want his phone uh, because they believe him to be a witness in the Tina Peters case, which is some uh, obscure case. I I think in Colorado where she's accused of uh, leaking what is it. Uh, what is it, uh, electronic voting uh, information on Telegram. And so because he yeah, told them that that's a phony reason to try and seize my phone, uh, they, uh, they raided him. So cars pulled up in front of him. And uh, so, yeah, they went uh, full on. And uh, Donald Trump uh, put, uh, posted on a true social uh, Mike Lindell, the pillow guy, was just raided by the FBI. We are now officially living in a weaponized police state, rigged elections and all. Our country's a laughing stock all over the world. The, uh, the majesty of the United States is gone. Can't let this happen. Take back America. But the FBI were doing this even when Trump was president. Uh, remember how uh, during the, the, the Russiagate uh, Russiagate investigations, which of course was a, a whole hoax. Uh, they managed to uh, prosecute uh, uh, members of Trump's inner circle, uh, former national security uh, uh, security advisor Mike Flynn, uh, his campaign manager Paul Manafort, and his confidant Roger Stone. They get them all on these, what is it? They got Roger Stone on basically these uh, trumped up charges, pardon the pun, what is it? They, they accused him of, what is that? Witness tampering, intimidation, lying to Congress and obstruction of justice. That's the the obstruction of justice. That's probably what they'll go after Mike Lindell on because, oh, he didn't hand over his phone, obstruction of, of justice. They just basically need to like, uh, basically come up with some obscure reason to go after them. And when they, they fight back and say uh, that it's phony, uh, then uh, then they, they they go after them, and when they don't cooperate, they they slap them with some some charges. And uh, one of the uh, uh, the best uh, cartoonists uh, in uh, the United States, uh, Branco, uh, summed it up perfectly. So this is the FBI suffocating Mike Lendell with a pillow, uh, which says, uh, "My free speech." Now, 
I mentioned the the fact that uh, what is it? Uh, you can come illegally off uh, uh, into the United States via the southern border, and they don't check your vaccine status. But if you're a tourist coming legally via plane, uh, you have to be vaccinated. Novak Djokovic. I wasn't allowed to compete in the US Open because foreigners still have to be vaccinated. Uh, this is despite uh, Biden himself uh, last night uh, with an interview on uh, 60 Minutes, uh, CBS, uh, with Scott Pilley, uh, declaring the pandemic over. Mr. President, first Detroit auto show in three years. Yeah. Is the pandemic over? The pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's, but the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing. And I think this is a perfect example of it. Yes. Yeah, so according to Biden, that, uh, yeah, it's it's all over now, which will will trigger uh, a lot of the 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 blue state uh, COVID uh, zealots who well they they they're, they're very triggered by what Biden said, and what is he says? Oh, nobody sees wearing masks yet. Uh, we've seen you still wearing like double masks outside as well as uh, Kamala Harris uh, uh, as well. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, it's good of you to to say uh, that uh, it's it's over. I'm sure it has nothing to do with uh, the upcoming midterm uh, elections, uh, where the Amer the uh, the American public is just sick of the the COVID uh, theater. So that concludes another week of, of Tim's News Explosion. Uh, I'll be back on Friday with uh, another edition of Trad Tasman Talk, 6 p.m. Melbourne time on the Checkwood YouTube channel with Dewey DeBoer. We'll be covering the latest news in the Tasman nations, and that's when I'll also have my uh, Victorian election election campaign coverage uh since well the campaign is pretty much in 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 full swing and over the weekend uh dan andrews he's uh ratcheted up he is lying and spinning so i'll deep dive uh into that uh but uh this song uh which uh i'm not sure uh all of you have have come across before basically uh sums up not just dan andrew's uh uh conduct uh this week uh but over his entire time as 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 premier A uh, very filthy language, but as I said previously, there is no other two words to describe Daniel Andrews as a fucking cunt. Uh, when I showed this to one of my Auntie Dan friends, uh, what, did, what did they say that uh, uh, he, wa uh, he wanted that tune to be played at either his wedding or or, or, f or funeral? It was just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a catchy tune. I will... <laughs> I will admit. So once again, thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you on Friday. Remember, stay safe, stay sane, and also stay happy as well. Good night, everybody. Tim's News Explosion. 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 Tim's news explosion.